We've got the Spiel des Jahres winners, as well as an update on the fight over Disney's Lorcana. Let's find out about this and more in this week's News Roundup for July 17th, 2023. First, an update on the fight between Upper Deck and Ravensburger over Disney's Lorcana. If you want to know more, there is a whole separate video that goes into this. But basically, Upper Deck is saying that Ravensburger and the game designer for Disney's Lorcana, Miller, stole ideas from Upper Deck for a card game they have in the works called Rush of Ikor in order to make Disney's Lorcana. They also stated they wanted to have an injunction that they wouldn't be able to sell Disney's Lorcana until this is solved. Now, obviously, that's a big issue, but it seems we have some updates, and it definitely looks like this is leaning much more in Ravensburger's favor. First off, it's basically just who Ravensburger has to help them. On their legal counsel, they have Brian Lewis, who helped match the gathering back in the day in the late 90s, 2000s, when it came to securing and their own legal issues with the card game. From everything I read, he seems to be the go-to person when it comes to legal issues involving trading card games. Next, and this comes from Brian Lewis himself, he has stated that not only do they believe they have a strong case, this is going to be so good that they believe they're going to be able to dismiss it outright, so not even get into the courts. They have a very strong case, but there are three major points they want to get across. One, they want to say that Ravensburger was actually working on Disney's Lorcana before Miller joined, meaning that they already had the game in the works before they could even possibly have stolen the mechanics from Rush of Ikor. Second, they state Miller wasn't working on Rush of Ikor, rather that he was asked to work on a game called Shell Beach. However, until we see more, it could be one of those things that was the code word or name at the time. I don't know. That's just from, well, my experience with Magic the Gathering and how they have all these code names for all their sets. But finally, that all the mechanics that they are complaining that are shared between Rush of Ikor and Disney's Lorcana are basically could be said about almost any other trading card game. So right now they're pushing really hard to make sure that this just gets dismissed. And not just because, you know, they have the people working behind them as well as just all this information, but the fact that they're still going through of selling this at Gen Con makes me feel at least they feel optimistic. I wouldn't expect them to still be selling tickets and trying to get booths and products there if they thought there was a good chance that this injunction at the very least would go through preventing them from selling anything. Now, it could happen that the injunction would go through right after Gen Con and then all the Disney Locana stuff that was sold there is the only thing that happens. But I still feel that at the very least, this does look pretty good for Ravensburger. Some have say they think this is just a PR excuse for Upper Deck, though I don't feel like this puts Upper Deck in a very good light, and I, maybe I'm wrong. This could be just any news is good news. But regardless, I do feel safe enough that if you're excited for Disney's Arcana and you're going to be at Gen Con, that you shouldn't be too worried that this court case will disrupt your experience. The 2023 Spiel de Jahres award ceremony was held yesterday, so we now know the winners of the three most coveted awards, the Kinder, Kenner, and Spiel de Jahres. So let's go over each one so you can see if this is now a game you want to pick up. First, for the Kinder Spiel, the kid-related award, we have Mysterium Kids. This is not too much of a surprise for me, even though I haven't played it, because I already think Mysterium in and of itself is fantastic. So. I definitely am not surprised. No shade against the other two games, but I do think Mysterio is, even just the base one, is one that is always enjoyable and fun to play with. So I can't imagine the kid one being any worse, especially for younger audiences. Then let's move on to the Kenner Spiel. This is supposedly for more complex gamers. And the winner here was Challengers. This game is a tug of war fighting over a flag using a deck of cards you modify each time between rounds. I will actually have a review of it as I did purchase it and got enough plays through. I just wish I got it out in time before this was announced, but I'll still be able to tell you my thoughts on that on a later date. And finally, there's the coveted Spiel de Yaras. It's what's everything named after. And this year, it went to Dorfromantik. This game is actually based off a video game of the same name, and from what I can tell, shares a lot of the similar mechanics. That said, I haven't played the video game yet, and I'm definitely not going to touch it until I try out the board game first, because I want to see my experience of trying out this board game without already having some idea of what this property is like. I'm very excited, and hopefully, like last year, I'll be able to find a chance to demo it at Gen Con. I'll let you know more during my Gen Con reports. 
But regardless, congratulations to all three games for winning the awards and the nominees as well. They're still great choices for you to check out. Honestly, when it comes to anything like this with lots of awards, it, just the nominees list, I think, is almost the better place to look instead of just the winners because for the most part, all of them can be great picks. And not just for board games, almost for anything else in those categories. But you can let me know if you agree with these picks or if you think a different game should have won one of the awards. Funko CEO Brian Mariotti is stepping down. A big reason, though, as I'm sure a lot of people are guessing, involves the fact that Funko has not been doing so well. Apparently, after the pandemic, Funko wasn't doing so well to the fact that they lost $61 million over the last quarter. This is obviously quite a bit and is, as far as I can tell, the reason that he is stepping down. Now, they don't have a new CEO yet, but I'm sure the new one will make cuts all across the board, try to turn the ship around, so to speak. And this is important to us as Funko does carry quite a library of games covering many different properties that don't have games elsewhere, usually old classic movies as well as some new horror ones that you'll be able to try out at Gen Con. So for now, we'll see what happens. I'm pretty sure last I saw their game area was actually doing one of the like one of the better areas for Funko as a whole umbrella company. But of course, when things are this drastic, I can't be surprised if they're not just going to hit every sector of the company. And now onto new game announcements. First, we return to Upper Deck actually with of course a new legendary game. This one is a new core set under the Marvel umbrella. This one titled Legendary Marvel's What If? This actually would be closer aligned to the cinematic line of Marvel's Legendary, as this is based off the Netflix show, not the entire What If catalog. Still, that means tons of new heroes and cards, many of which I assume I don't think have a already legendary counterpart, the same way that there was a Captain America already in the game versus the movie version of Captain America. I also imagine how this will be the theme of their booth at this year's Gen Con. Next, we have a new RPG from Odiphius. It's Star Trek, but this one is designed for Solo. Titled Captain's Log, this one has you take on the role of the captain writing your log. So the Solo experience is you going through the universe of Star Trek on your own as you write up your report for Starfleet. Pegasus Spiel has a new game called Triketa in which you are trying to collect a very specific set of animals to form a Triketa. And finally, Chiasmus has announced a new board game of horror on the Orient Express based off the popular Cthulhu RPG storyline, but now board game form. But that is all we have this week. Let me know your thoughts on all this, be it these stories, or of course, Gen Con coming up. I, of course, will be reporting there as well as having my Gen Con preview up soon. So let me know your thoughts on all this. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Will, and I'll see you on the next news roundup.